play. If it's not a Stanley Kubrick film, then what the heck is Full Metal Alchemist? Will shining tears make you cry? And we travel to the future to review Major League Baseball 2006. The future is now. It's game time. <laughs> Hold me, as I introduce Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. There's nothing to hold. Nothing at all. Hello and welcome to X-Play. On today's show, with an anime RPG from Square Enix. This is the company who gave the world Final Fantasy. Yes, you love them, I know. And I bet there's an androgynous teen in there somewhere, too. I sure hope so. <laughs> Plus, there's also a side-scrolling nostalgia for all the people in our audience over the age of 10. And a game called Jaeger. It's about a flying sim, or is it a drinking sim. Plus, we review one of the year's biggest sports games. And later, we take a look at what may be the worst RPG of this century. I know. I can barely contain my excitement. It cannot be missed. <laughs> but we begin with that action RPG we mentioned just a moment earlier. Yeah, it comes to us from Square Enix, and uh, boy, is the plot weird. Here's our review of Full Metal Alchemist. As we know, alchemy was that fruitless pursuit carried out by wizened old crackpots somewhere in the Dark Ages. They'd take a rock, or iron, or a duck, and try to turn it into the accepted dough of the day. Gold. <laughs> Apparently a lot has happened since those happy black plagued days. Most notably, Japanese anime, which hardly hearts doing any damn thing they want with historical fact. Looks like we've got alchemists among us. Anime alchemists can turn random things into just about anything. Anything that can cause egregious harm to strange amalgamated creatures that seem to be roaming this game. Full Metal Alchemist and the Broken Angel brings us brothers Ed and Al Elric. In a misguided attempt to bring their mother back from the dead, lose a great deal of their anatomy to their misfired spell. Ed loses his arms and legs and Al... Well, Al just loses every damn part of the corpse that contains him. All that's left of poor Alphonse is his soul, which some forward-thinking Japanese animator decided to place inside this loin-clothed robot. He must have had quite a pair of nuts screwed to his bolt to require a loincloth. The game bundles a 3D realm with an RPG for maximum adrenaline-pumping fury. Not so much. One of the problems in the game is the terrain's lack of exploration. The path you'll follow feels more like one long cage as you stumble forward to confront a rather predictable collection of poorly dispositioned denizens of evil. Weapons are plentiful, and transmuting humdrum objects into ballistic bling has a certain appeal. Sadly, loin-shy robot can only be controlled with a few simple commands. Square Enix missed a golden opportunity to have him be controlled by another player. Animated cutscenes translate the television series nicely. Like hell, you say! But when they give way to static conversation screens, they begin to spin the great wheel of tedium. Run, kids! He may want something more for that Dr. Pepper than you're willing to give! Indeed! You'll, of course, level up, you'll cure yourself, and apply your mad skills against formidable bosses. But it never quite reaches any great degree of challenge. Oh, but there are whimsical pearls of wisdom set to thoughtfully cheesy music. With all of the visual fury of combat and variety of weapon types, you'd think this title might hold your interest. It really doesn't. With a frustrated exhalation, we give it a two out of five. No way, I can't lose. Did anyone really think we were capable of getting through an entire review without at least one fart noise? We simply don't possess that kind of restraint. Apparently not. But I do have to go back to the title on this one. It is very reminiscent of Kubrick's Full Metal Jacket. It's like making 2001 Munch's Odyssey. It just doesn't sound right. Of course, something that never sounds right is the sound of viewer mail. Now, we usually read it at the end of the show. But today's viewer mail deals with something that's been getting people riled up all over the message boards. Our perceived liberal bias. Now, today's email is from Wayne C. Bates. He writes, 
I find it disturbing that your review of the game co-developed by the NRA had such a heavy political slant. I am not an NRA member. I am, however, a 36-year-old avid outdoor sportsman and video gamer. I have never had the chance to go varmint hunting, but I am sure I would enjoy it. Adam, on the other hand, probably wouldn't. I can't imagine the same guy who'd wear a dress in public, allow Morgan to beat him so easily in paintball, and in general be a girly man, ever be comfortable holding something as masculine as a high-powered rifle. One last thing, I found it extremely ironic that later in the same episode, you gave a game where you are hired to hunt down and kill people a four out of five. But I am sure they are all bad people. Wayne, you are absolutely right. They were all bad people. And as for me not being able to hold something masculine in my hand, behold, my nerf zooka. Yes, you're really making your point there, Adam. But how about a masculine intro for the next game? Okay, here's a review of a size rolling classic, Metal Slug for the Game Boy Advance. <gasps> oh, did I hurt someone? I'm sorry. The March of War continues. This week's episode, Attack of the Dirty Savages. Join our brave soldier, Walter Ryan, as he battles through this unforgiving jungle of this South Pacific island hell. From the dangerous beach landing all the way to the deadly combat with a super intelligent robot. Our boy will fight to the bitter end, even if he has to kill the enemy where he pees. Metal Slug Advance may look dated, but anyone that loves old school action can't go wrong with this retro fun. Imagine a world where you, and you alone, have to face down an entire army on a remote island in the South Pacific. You can either wait for a tsunami, or you can dive headlong at them killing everything in your path. But wait, what's this? Looks like the girls are getting in on the action too. Meet Tyra Elston. This 20-year-old bombshell is as dangerous as she is beautiful. Tyra enjoys killing the enemy almost as much as she enjoys saving our boys. Sadly, the game doesn't offer a multiplayer option. It does, however, allow you to kill men in a tank with a laser and whatever this gun is. You can also destroy a Harrier jet with a handgun. Say, Johnny, don't forget to collect all your cards. That's right, collect cards to remember those men you slaughtered in a bloodthirsty rampage. Since the game is fairly easy to beat, experienced gamers will most likely have a more exciting time trying to collect all the cards the game has to offer. You can also gun down the indigenous people of the island. a boy, Ryan. Kill those dirty savages before they kill you. Overall, if you're pining for a nostalgic feel with a new game, you won't go wrong with this. We give Metal Slug Advance a four out of five. Keep up the good work, soldiers. And remember, the children of America need you to kill and kill and kill. Brought to you by Happy Time Lemonade. Don't leave. We'll be back with reviews of MLB 2006 and more of Adam being manly. Does this shirt make me look fat? Yeah. When I go like this? Yeah. What? Up next, a game called Jaeger. No, not a drinking game, but it should be. That was sweet. Three pizzas with whatever I want. If I want olive, I can order olive. If I want mushroom, I can order mushroom. If I want pineapple, I... Buy three or more medium one-topping pizzas, and they're all just five bucks each. Only from Domino's. Get the door. It's the 555 deal. Without seeing, cast the first stone. Ah! It slipped. <laughs> but when five cheerleaders witness a murder, they're the only team. Nobody is trying to kill that us. That can protect them. You girls are cheerleaders, huh? Back in my day, we brought it. Everybody dance Tommy Lee Jones, man of the house, with Cedric the Entertainer. Now that's old school. Ready PG-13 <laughs> opens everywhere Friday. <laughs>
Fred Parker eats a Snickers so he can keep going. Working late, he calls his wife, but accidentally dials a radio station and wins a trip to St. Louis. While visiting a museum, he saves star running back Marshall Falk. Out of gratitude, the Rams changed their name to the St. Louis Freds. Make it happen with Snickers. You can make a great salary by getting IT certified now with Smart Certified Direct's fast and easy training courses. Their self-paced MCSE, Cisco, and A-plus certification training allows you to study whenever and wherever you want with 24-hour access to certified instructors. Take a free training course title now by visiting www.smartcertifieddirect.com or by calling 1-877-TRAINING and mentioning code TECHTV. Get your free course today. Three pizzas with whatever I want. If I want olive, I can order olive. If I want mushroom, I can order mushroom. If I want pineapple, I... Buy three or more medium one-topping pizzas, and they're all just five bucks each. Only from Domino's. Get the door. It's the 555 deal. Get your hands off your joystick and jump with the G-Spot. Two hours of cold popping, judgment-slamming, no-holds-barred game of failure. From video heroes to total zeros, we're feeding your obsession seven days a week. Yes. Find the G-Spot tonight starting at 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific. I'm being held captive against my will by Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. Welcome back to X-Play. We have returned with more game reviews. Some of them will excite you, like Major League Baseball 2006. And some will terrify you, like our review of what is, so far, the worst RPG of the century. That's coming up later. But right now, we review a game that is named after either a famous pilot or a licorice-flavored liquor. And it only costs 20 bucks. Now, should it cost a lot less than that? Well, we'll tell you when we review Jaeger. Here's a hint. If you're going to name your development studio after a game, make the game good. Such is the story behind Jaeger, an aerial shooter that shares the name of one of the most prolific pilots in history, yet has nothing to do with him. At least it has a message. Oh no, not Hank Spanner. He's some crazy guy. Crazy or not, if he's kicking ass, I'm with him. Oh boy, I love ass kicking time. You play as Magnus Tide, a freelance space jockey fresh off blowing his last mission. Not only did he lose his ship. What does manual control calibration mean? How should I know? You press the damn button. He lost his chance with his icy assigning officer. I lost my promotion. Five years training down the tubes. Back to where I started in one easy move, thanks to the one and only Magnus, trust me, I know what I'm doing, Tide. Damn! He also has quite a reputation. I never have trouble turning them on. <laughs> God, it's huge! It has a name on its side! <laughs> a gun that big? I didn't need asking twice. We have a new hard man in town. Mm. For reasons unknown, he's given another shot at protecting the island nation of Proteus from a recent wave of pirate attacks. Hey, Tide, hurry up and get bored. There's a job waiting. But first, he and you are forced to endure a mundane training regimen that gets the game off to a grinding start. Okay, Tide, you managed to hit some of the guns. If you manage to survive the training in a conscious state of mind, it's off to the game proper where Agnes takes on repetitive missions for Ash. Let's see, you blow up ships, engage in dogfights, easy come, easy go, and help your wingmen. That was sweet, Tide. Then you blow up more ships. Nice one, Tide. Engage in more dogfights. Good to comedy, Tide. I think you get the picture. The alphabet has more surprises than this game. You're driving me to drink. Other than occasionally hopping in a gun turret, there's not much variety. Only someone with a very twisted mind could dream up that. The actual combat is fairly solid. There's a nice lock-on mechanic that makes dogfighting a little easier. You can also use a scope to snipe enemies from a distance. Our primary complaint is that your ship has basically two speeds, fast and slow. Switch to hover mode and place yourself on a starting area. There's no throttle, so you must toggle between warp speed, which isn't all that fast, Watch out. and a crawling hover. The gameplay can seem tough until you realize that there are repair spots located around the island locales that will completely heal your ship. Speaking of the environment, there's more fog in this game than in the movie The Fog. We may sound harsh on this game, but that's only because we've already been treated to the excellent Crimson Skies. Captain Mullet has your detailed instructions. Great. But at $20, Jaeger is a good deal on a white knuckle shooter. We give it a three. Oh boy, I love ass kicking time. Out of five.
Sure, it only costs $20, but so does the now discounted Crimson Skies. Crimson Skies is far better than Jaeger, and we voted it our best looking game of 2003. So, if you have an Xbox, do yourself a favor and fly the Red Skies instead of the Jaeger flavored ones. Hmm. I wish this guy were licorice flavored. I like candy. Is this too masculine for you? Mmm, hey, Rudy. Coming up, no performance enhancing drugs required to play MLB 2006. Now, again. A cool blast from an air-conditioned store. One of life's simple pleasures. Milky Way, chocolate, caramel, nougat. One of life's simple pleasures. No film on DVD. Saw. I want to play a game. No name. The newspapers started calling it the Jigsaw Killer. No motive. Hold it right there, don't move! No escape. He finds ways for his victims to kill themselves. Saw. Buy it today on DVD. Excuse me. Hi, can I see that laptop? Sure. You can access the internet all around your house. It's wireless networking. Did you say wireless? I'm free, I'm free. Not just a puppet on a string, no ties to... Anything. Have your wireless network installed at home with the help of Geek Squad, available at Best Buy. Thousands of possibilities. Get yours. Check this out. This is what we do for a living. We're video game designers. And we're game programmers. With the training offered at Collins College, you can learn to design, code, and test games like this. And this. Game design is a growing career. For a brochure on a career in game design, call Collins College at 1-888-256-1200 now. That's 1-888-256-1200. Call Collins College now. You ever think you might have worms? If your computer is slowing down or crashing or just acting weird. E-acceleration with the full power of stop sign can make it like new again. Stop sign gives you virus protection second to none. With a spam blocker and spyware remover. Pop-up blocker. And the stop sign firewall for all the protection you'll ever need. Guaranteed. You may be infected and not even know it. Go to stopsign.com for a free virus scan now. Huddle up with the lovely ladies of the Lingerie Bowl. Kind of G4 Sports presents Football Frenzy 05. Tomorrow night at 10.30 Eastern, 7.30 Pacific. Presented by T-Mobile. Once again, two people who are part of a super secret government program, Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. No one told me about it. The secret. Oh. Welcome back to X-Play. We have returned with one of the biggest sports titles of the year, Major League Baseball 2006. And this one is not made by EA Sports. Yes, it's made by Sony's internal 989 sports development team. And in the past, we've been less than kind in 989's efforts. Their sports games, well, we gave a lot of them two out of five. Yeah, but one thing they've always done well with baseball. Uh -huh. So we're crossing our fingers and bringing you our review of MLB 2006. The great American pastime has had its share of controversy. The White Sox threw the World Series. Pete Rose has the worst hair I've ever seen. And the Cleveland Indians still have Chief Wahoo. I'm an Indian. But now the players have tarnished the game by loading up on performance-enhancing drugs. Steroids, good! Babe Ruth never resorted to this. He hit 60 home runs fat and drunk. <laughs> Fortunately, MLB 2006 is controversy-free. In fact, it actually restored my faith in the game. 
lined up the middle. As far as sports games go, baseball has always had the most trouble translating to an exciting video game experience. MLB 2006 is close, with engaging gameplay that focuses more on pitcher-batter duels than on roid-induced home runs. Uh, got him swinging on the split finger pitch, and that's out number one. The pitching works on a meter system that you've seen in many other games. However, the game also takes into account how confident your pitcher is. If he's throwing a shutout, it'll be easier for him to place his pitches. If he's giving up hit after hit, it'll be harder for him to regain command of the strike zone. And look out as that one ran in and got him. Then you'll be shaking in your pants when Barry Bond steps up to... Wait a minute, who is Reggie Stalker? Where's the biggest roid freak of them all? Steroids, good! Everyone else is there, and the MLB animation provides all their little quirks, from Nomar's OCD to Sheffield's ADD. The small subtlety of the animation makes MLB 2006 feel like a real baseball game. Batters tap a plate, and pitchers dig in on the mound. And if Pete Rose was in the game, I'm sure he'd double down. Gambling, good! But after playing five games without hitting a home run, I began to wonder if there was something wrong with me. So I started taking extreme measures. so much. Or I'll break you like a twig. Now, the only thing that needs to be worked on is the fielding. See you at the ballpark. But who needs fielding when you can crank them out of the ballpark like I do? We give MLB 2006 a four out of five. <laughs> Morgan mad! You know, that stand double really looked a lot like you, Morgan, especially the strong jaw. Do you want to be hit? Because I've been eating children's chewable steroids, and I can do it. Okay, now, why is it on the show that's supposed to be about my masculinity, I always end up getting emasculated? Shh. You're pretty when you're quiet. <laughs> up next, behold the crapulence of Shining Tears. <laughs> Brought to you by the U.S. Postal Service. Just about anything you can do at the post office, you can do at USPS.com. Hey, Angie, you going to the post office? Hey, Ted, you going to the post office? Do I know you? Anyone go to the post office? Jeff. Ronnie. Connie. <laughs> Isn't anyone going to the post office? Hey, Chuck. Can't go to the post office? Go to USPS.com. From buying stamps to shipping packages, almost anything you do at the post office, you can do at USPS.com. It's how the U.S. Postal Service is working for you. Hey, Steve. Lunch? New flavor charged dentine ice gives you a shot of icy cold breath. Give me a piece of that. Share it with somebody special. New flavor charged dentine ice. Go bold. Dude, that's cool. RBK Pumps, inflatable shoes for a custom fit. The Netscape internet service lets me choose if I want to have their unlimited access for just $9.95. So does Net Zero. And Netscape lets me have Web Accelerator for free with their $9.95 plan. Net Zero charges $14.95 for their service with Web Accelerator. What do you get with Net Zero? I'm a Netscape guy. 
Right now, Netscape gives you free web accelerator to surf up to five times faster. Net Zero charges $14.95. That's over 50% more. Get Netscape for $9.95. And if you sign up now, get a one-month free trial. Saúde para o Spicy Saturday Roll. Saúde! Anime Unleashed and coming up next. I can't say I much care for Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. Right back at you. Pretty much. Welcome back to X Play. We review a lot of games. Some are good, some are bad. But we have never in the history of this show. And if we are wrong, people on the message boards will let us know. We have never given an RPG a score lower than two out of five. Is that all about to change? <laughs> oh, please, Lord, say it ain't so. Here's our review of what may be the worst RPG of this century, Shining Tears. Would you know my name if I played Shining Tears in Heaven? I must be strong and carry on, because I know I'll never play Shining Tears in Heaven. Shining Tears is an RPG about a man with a past, a past he can't remember. The so-called hero of the story washes up on a beach, is rescued by a lovely lady who hangs out by the beach, alone. He doesn't remember anything. Everybody believes it has to do with this mysterious ring that he's been carrying. Any resemblance to Lord of the Rings is purely intentional. This RPG also has some battle action in which to play. I can't read this anymore. This game is bad. This game is so bad. How bad is it? This game is so bad, it was caught lip-syncing on Saturday Night Live. hi -oh. <laughs> This game is so bad, Ben Affleck wants to star in a live-action movie. hi -oh. <laughs> This game is so bad, Jay Leno should host it. hi, -oh. <laughs> hi -oh. If you like RPGs with hackneyed, cliched writing, Shining Tears is for you. If you like combat with a sense of style, and by style I mean crap, then Shining Tears is your game. If you like graphics with a visual appearance not seen since the days... You know, this game is so bad, I can't even come up with a semi-clever metaphor. This is what I'd rather be doing than playing Shining Tears. All right, all right, I'm sorry. I'm being too insensitive about this game. Let's just listen in to Shining Tears and let the game speak for itself. I'm sorry. It's just this game is so bad, my mind starts wandering to random thoughts. You'll find yourself in all sorts of battles with hoodlums, wolves, and whatever these slimy whatevers are. Look at these wolves waiting to pounce. It's like Tara Reid and an alcoholic beverage or something. Hi Will somebody hit something already? Here's a list of things you could be doing instead of playing Shining Tears. If there's one good thing I can say about this game, it's that this segment is now over. Shining Tears gets a one out of five. All right! Okay, other things you could do instead of playing Shining Tears. Write us angry and badly misspelled email. Try to resell your Sega Genesis on eBay. Post about bad RPGs on our message board. Learn to read. Play through Resident Evil 4. Again. You could write a musical version of Tron. I like that one. Please don't. Ooh. You could also make a homemade Tron suit. You could watch more TV. Or you could you could go to the bathroom. Mm, watch Gem and the Hologram Season 1 box set. Oh, that's good. I want to oh, go yeah, do that, that. That one would be good. Or you can get yourself a Nerfzooka, and as you and use cool it, you can watch like your Adam. masculinity meter improve. Good night. Oh. G4 Sports presents Football Frenzy 05. See if Dwight Freeney can defend his title at the Madden Bowl. Get some gaming tips with Raiders wideout Jerry Porter. It's confidential, don't tell nobody. And then join these hard-hitting hotties on the practice field as they prepare for the Lingerie Bowl. It's kinda hot. G4 Sports presents Football Frenzy 05, tomorrow night at 10.30 Eastern, 7.30 Pacific. Presented by T-Mobile. Two, 
Today on X-Play. Kingdom